Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. We are reviewing all of the rooms on the Canadian. Yeah, we had a wonderful trip on the Canadian. We did it over the winter, which we really recommend. Uh, we loved it. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But we got a lot of questions because we've done it now. We've done the Canadian uh, in a couple different rooms a couple different times, and we've checked out all the rooms. So we can kind of give you the ins and outs of which one is better and which one you should pick because there is quite a big price difference between them, and you may be able to save some money doing this. So. Uh, let's jump in with the the what rooms there are and then we'll kind of go through them and give you the pros and cons and the prices but uh first of all you have a cabin for two which you're probably going to book if you have two people then you have a cabin for one uh, which you could technically each get one uh, then you have the upper lower bunk situation and then the prestige rooms Yes, and I think this is one of the things that we did love about the Canadian is there were so many great choices and the fact that there were options for single travelers or solo travelers. There's a lot of options for everybody. Um, and again, for all different budgets. So when you're looking at these prices, there's lots of price differences between these. We traveled the two times we did, we did cabin for two and we did the upper lower berth, right? Right, yeah. and. There are definitely some differences between them. So let's jump into the cabin for two. The cabin for two on Via Rail, if you know, we're, we kind of compare this to Amtrak a lot, but it is kind of like an Amtrak uh, bedroom basically because you do have your own uh, toilet in the room, but it does not have a shower. The shower is down at the end of the hall, but it is a private cabin with a nice window and Plenty of space to move around in there, mm -hmm. I thought. Yeah, and you had a nice big sink. What I did like about it, though, is that during the day, uh, the beds are put away completely, and you have two chairs to sit on. So it's nice. And then on top of that, the chairs move around. So you could put them facing out towards the window. You could put them facing inside towards the room. Wherever you want to put those, you just kind of move those around. So that was really nice. And then at night, what they do is they take those chairs, they fold down really small, and they go underneath the lower bunk. And then the you know the two beds are down, and you know you can sleep like normal. But then during the day, you've got those two chairs, which are really quite comfortable too. Yeah, and I think the thing to keep in mind on the Canadian is that you do have that great private area. But on the Canadian, you have so many other amazing areas. You have the park car and you have the dome car. And we're going to show you what that looks like because it is unlike anything that you've ever seen. If, you're only, if you've only been on Amtrak, uh, you will not have seen anything like this. And they are so nice that for most of the day when it's daylight, you're going to either be in one of those or you're going to be in the dining room, right? Exactly. So you actually aren't going to be in your room a ton of the time because uh, they also have a lot of activities that they offer as well from different talks, areas to play games, uh, places obviously where you can sit and read, and then of course the two different viewing areas in each of those, the dome car and the park car. So there's really tons of spaces to be in and you know, you start to think to yourself, why am I in this room? I could go be doing something really fun on the train. <laughs> yeah, and another difference is, is like on Via Rail, they, you don't really eat your meals in the room at all. So you're going to be in the dining room for that full eh, hour and a half, two hour experience, depending on how quickly it's going. As well as the stops when you get there, they're much longer stops. Like they're gonna let you off. You might go walk around town for two hours. So I think that Compared to Amtrak, which is what we normally ride, we're in our room way more on Amtrak than we are on VRL, and that just kind of brings home the value of this cabin for two because it is quite pricey. Uh, it, it's one of the more expensive train rides. Actually, I think you know it's it's probably the most expensive train ride you can do <laughs> in North America uh, is to do this one. So you you really need to ask yourself. Do I want to spend that money because the sleeping isn't that much different than these other cabins that they have available? Exactly. Yes. So let's talk about some of the other ones. Uh, the cabin for one is going to be pretty much similar to the cabin for two, except for it's quite a bit smaller. It's mm -hmm. it's quite small. It is. It's actually even smaller than a roomette 
on Amtrak if yeah. you've done that. Which is hard and, to believe. <laughs> yeah, and, and the other disadvantage is when the bed is made, it covers up the commode. So you either have to move the bed if you're going to go in the middle of the night, or you'll have to go out, you know, in, in the bathroom in the hall. Yeah, the advantage of it is it is private. So if you just want that private space to kind of retreat back to either some point during the day or at night, you, you do get that privacy because the next ones we're going to talk about are semi-private, I would call them. Mm -hmm. And that's the upper lower bunk. Yeah, <laughs> semi-private. Uh, well, and actually the cabin for one has this too, is it's a, instead of a door, it's a curtain. And that's the, the deal with the upper lower berth, the upper lower bunks, is first of all, um, you don't actually have to know the person that's on the upper or the lower. It could be a complete stranger, but you're not going to need to interact, so it doesn't matter. The only thing is the ladder is going to be on the outside of your bed. If you're on the bottom, the ladder will be outside your bed, but it won't hinder you in any way, shape, or form. So the person in the upper bunk, unless they're you know moving around a lot and making a ruckus, won't really affect your ride. So you don't actually have to know the person up there. So this is a great option for solo travelers is if you're going to have to go in the night anyways, you might as well, you know, get a little less expensive option like this and just go to the bathroom in the hallway. <laughs> yeah, you will have to do that if you're in the upper lower bunk. And we were really surprised when we got the upper lower bunk because it was not really what we thought it would be. It was more like two self-contained pods with a ladder and the ladder is actually outside the curtain. There's just curtains, there's no doors. They put You pull the curtain and the ladder's outside. So in order to get down, you have to go outside of your bunk. So like she said, it really isn't specific that you need to know the person in there with you. Whereas in an Amtrak roomette, there's a door that closes. You do have that extra privacy, but you do have to know the person in there that's sharing that, that roomette with you. Uh, for this reason, we have seen actually people to try to save a little bit of money, they'll both book the upper, because the uppers are cheaper than the lowers. And they ended up not, we talked to them at dinner one night, and they ended up not really liking that, and they wish they hadn't done it. But you can do that. Um, and if you're single doing this, you could just book the upper or the lower also. And you know the lower is just gonna be a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. And I think what's amazing is, is that it doesn't matter which one of these you book, you're all going to be eating the same meals, you all have access to the same dome car, park car, to basically everything is gonna be about the same. The cost is really for your sleeping accommodation and maybe bathroom accommodation of sorts, right? Right. It, it, you're paying for privacy level, I guess, of sorts, right? Would you say it that way? You are paying for privacy level because in the upper lower uh, situation, you're going to be able to hear everything and everyone's going to be able to hear you in the night. And generally, I mean, it's fine. It's not It's not bad at all. It's Everyone on there was really nice and considerate of each other. So that will generally be the case on the Canadian. So that's not an issue. It's just if you just can't get past that, you have a mental issue with not being able to uh, sleep if you know people can hear you or whatever <laughs> that could be an issue, but It's really not that bad at all. Yeah, it's not bad at all. I think maybe if you're like a very loud snorer <laughs> You might yeah. be a little or bit if you're, a, if you're a light sleeper. Yeah, because yeah, people you do hear the people uh, in, the the, in the hallway um, And sometimes what happened the hallways are actually quite narrow yeah. and what happens a lot is people walking past will inadvertently run into the stairs, um, the little ladders outside, and you'll hear them banging into them. And it, when it moves, it actually rattles on the whole bed. So that is, we did have that a couple of times, like either, either late at night or real early in the morning, people going to breakfast or something. And it was like, oh, you like startled awake because you hear this loud sound. Yeah, you will get, because the ladders are kind of staggered. There's one on this side, then there's one on this side. And it's like kind of <laughs> weaving through them and I often found that at night, it's not really an issue. It's in the morning. I don't know why it is, but like after 10 o'clock at night, everybody universally thinks, oh, we should be quiet. It's nighttime. But when people wake up in the morning, they universally think, well, I'm up. Everybody else should be up. Let's make noise. So that's what happens. If you're a late riser, you're going to hear people for sure. Uh, because once they're up, they're going to be talking to the attendant and all that stuff's going to be happening. 
Happens on Amtrak too, but you just you have a door so you don't hear it as much, even though you still hear it. So mm -hmm. the only way to get by that is having the cabin for two, I think. Yeah. And then there's one more um, class of rooms, and it's kind of separated with a enormous difference <laughs> in price between it and the cabin for two. So out of these, we've so far discussed the cabin for one, the cabin for two, and upper and lower berth, which is the upper lower bunks. Um, and of those, the most expensive is the cabin for two, but there's one that's even more expensive than that. <laughs> that is the Prestige, and it is very private. It's a big bed, two people can sleep on the lower level. Uh, it's in its own private car, but other than that, you're going to be with everybody else. There's not a separate dining car. They do sp supposedly reserve a couple seats in the front of the dome car for people in Prestige, but whether that actually plays out in reality is another question. There is a special lounge in Toronto, but we kind of felt like it was worse because it's just way off in the back in the corner. And so it's like, go sit in there, Prestige people. So I don't know if you really just have the money to burn and you want to do that, that's fine. The only real advantage would be the size of the room and the being able to both sleep on the bottom, uh, bottom level. So that, to give you a couple ideas of the prices, that one is going to run you... Now, these are kind of ballparks because currency changes and prices change. And the, the price changes throughout the year of the train ride. So, but you're looking at, you know, twelve dollars to $14,000 for the prestige room, <laughs> uh, which is a lot of money. And, and in comparison, the cabin for two, which is the most expensive of the other three, like is about how four, much? It's like four to 5000 yeah. depending on whether time of year and whether you're talking Canadian or American. Yeah, so nearly three times yeah. more. And then you've got the upper lower bunk, which comes in at less than 2000 for two people, uh, which is a pretty good deal. I think we've done, we've done both of those, and I, I think if we did it again, we'd probably do the upper lower bunk, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that it's just easier um, than to have the, like we mentioned earlier, we were talking about how we spent so much time in the dome car and the park car and just doing activities and all the meals. By the time you do all of that, the literally only thing you're doing in your room is going to bed. Yeah. And if that's what you're doing, why spend all the extra money doing that when you can just be in the upper lower? Yeah, and I felt, I felt like the bed, actual bed in the upper lower, I was on the upper, it was really nice. It was wider than I thought it would be. There was more room than I thought. There's more room in that bed than an Amtrak room at. So, and partly because the bed goes all the way to the curtain. There's no little standing area. So the standing area is in the hallway. So it can be <laughs> tricky getting dressed if you're in an upper lower. But uh, as far as the actual sleeping, upper lower was great. Yeah, well, I actually would suggest that the bathrooms are actually really nice. The bathrooms and the shower that are available for the upper lower berth, they're actually quite nice and there's quite a bit of room. And in the women, the women's and the men's is different. Um, and we'll show you here as I'm talking about it, but the men's bathroom um, definitely has a lot less space than the women's bathroom. Um, in the women's bathroom, you also have like a vanity area where you, with a, a seat and everything where you could sit and like do makeup and there's an outlet there if you needed to use the hair dryer or a flat iron. Um, so you could get dressed there, just grab your stuff, which is what I ended up doing because I found it incredibly tricky to get, <laughs> to change out of my PJs and into my clothes while seated on the bed with the curtain closed. So I just, I thought, why am I doing this? Let me just pick up my stuff. I went to the bathroom. There was plenty of room in there. Just tricky, obviously, with the train moving. Just make sure, you know, you don't fall over and you're trying to put your pants on <laughs> in the bathroom. But um, that was nice. And then also the shower was quite nice. It wasn't quite as large as the showers that we're used to on like an Amtrak train uh, sleeper car, but it was, it was big enough. There was a, a little dressing area and of course the shower. Both of those spaces were a little bit smaller than the ones that you get on Amtrak, but plenty of space um, to do your business. Absolutely no problem there. So that was good too. And it's literally just right around the corner from the upper lower berths as well. The other thing is that on the upper lower berth during the day, 
you can you have those seats instead yeah right they make them in the seats yeah now that's i think something you have to make sure that you agree with upon with your your bunk mate is if you don't know that person but you want your bed made all day then that's not that might be an issue but for the most part i think people just want their beds back into two seats instead of just the beds all day long yeah uh so if we had to do it again i would i would definitely pick the upper lower i think if if budget is of any concern to you, upper lower is probably the best value. If you just want the maximum uh, experience, then go with the cabin for two or even the prestige uh, because those are going to be one step up. But dollar for dollar, upper lower is, is what we think is the best. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully this was helpful as you're trying to plan out a trip on the Canadian. Guys, if you have any questions about choosing these rooms, leave those for us in the comments down below. We'll see you guys next time.